In the last episode, we learned about timer interrupts and how it could be used to play a tone on a piezo buzzer. But in the end, we resorted back to the tone library because it does the work for us to play a note. However, the tone library only plays on one buzzer. What if you want two or more buzzers playing different tones? It is here, young grasshopper, where you leave the comfortable world of the Arduino and venture deep into the microcontroller. But do not worry, it shall be a rewarding journey. This multi-tone project is like a gateway drug to timer interrupts. We know how to make a tone from scratch, and scaling that up to two or more buzzers simply comes down to counting. I learned about this technique from Jeremy Bloom's website. His code is open source and you could go ahead and use it, but it's dangerous to go alone! Take this, it's, it's knowledge. I find code easier to decipher when I learn what the programmer knew when he wrote it up. Now back to the buzzer. We want one buzzer to play A by turning it on and off at 2.25 milliseconds. We also want another buzzer to play C at 131 hertz, which is 3.8 milliseconds. Now there is one interval of time that these two rates share. However, Jeremy Bloom noticed that sometimes a common interval interrupted the Arduino too early. To prevent this, Jeremy experimented some bit and found the magic number. 64 microseconds. Now with this common rate, it takes 36 times until we have to flip the first buzzer, and 60 times until we have to flip the second buzzer, to keep it C note and the others A note. This means we have to interrupt our Arduino every 64 microseconds. In the interrupt, we keep count of when was the last time we flipped the voltage of a specific buzzer. When one of the buzzer's counter reaches a specific number, we flip the voltage and reset the counter. You can use this calculator to figure out what number to count up to for your note. Hopefully, this knowledge should make the code understand. Ah. Okay, don't panic. Think of this group of code like this. You know how you change your settings in your office programs? It's like that, but instead of a visual interface, you deal with hardware directly. And in hardware, you have a bunch of formatted ones and zeros. You have to directly change these binary numbers to make the timer work in the way you want it to. I won't go into details, but if you want to learn more, check out this tutorial on timer interrupts and use this article as a handy reference guide. Now take this knowledge, understand Jeremy Bloom's code, and change it up for your own use. Next time on Curious Components, Timer interrupts go too far. Uh